Now, I noticed the gas prices on the way in today. Did you? No, you're yeah. too hot. You're too hot. Now, you're too hot. <laughs> Coming in real hot. Real hot. Well, now, they, now they've turned me down. Uh, turned me back yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just came in hot. Yep. I came yeah, in hot because I wanted to start the uh, start the show. Gas prices are high Gas everywhere. Gas prices are high. Because them oil men have been wrestling <laughs> them prices up. You know? They've been a hustling and wrestling. I like when we find episodes. It seems like every episode uh, still is just as applicable today as it was in 2008. Well, uh, shit, do, shit don't change, as they say, you know, because uh, we won't change. Human beings uh, will refuse to change and learn. It's so fascinating last night just to, to watch the news. And uh, maybe it's just because I'm an old man now, but I see I see the same stories that were told in 2008, people talking about a yeah. recession and they can't. And it's just the same thing. It's just the same mm -hmm. thing that's happening. A, a, a bubble was blown and a bubble has burst and people can't believe it. They just can't believe it. And it's never going to go back. It's never going to go back. It can't. Now, this one's different. Explain to me why the prices of gas have to go up. I understand the shortage issues. I understand the war. I understand the, the pipeline access issues. But why do the prices actually have to go up? Give me money. It's right. It's simply that, right? Isn't it Let's that? Into, well, that leads into Let's our get... next guest. Paul Krugman is going to be coming on and talk about macroeconomics. <laughs> uh -huh. Wait, Rob, why don't you guys. back off that mic? Why don't you <laughs> back off that mic? Buddy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, uh... I'm, coming I, in, I'm coming in excited. It's got to just be greed, right? It's like, man, we're going to take a big financial hit here if we keep selling gas at the same price. So what we'll do is we won't take that hit. We'll raise the price. We'll lay off a bunch. Greed? I'm thinking I'm greed. In the oil, oil business? I mean, what? I'm thinking a touch of greed Wait a here. second. Humans, human beings? Now, here's the thing, though. Uh, uh, you, guys have, you guys have seen the documentary, The, the Corporation, correct? I have not. No. I, I the Corporation? Know. It was I a documentary back in 2003. Rob, I think you and I watched it together. You think anyway, I it remember matter. shit from 2003? <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this, uh, this, this, this documentary did a really good job of kind of explaining, um, you know, the, the sort of inherent problem with a corporation in general is that it's got to continue to... The profits feed. have to grow. It's a living it, organism. It has to feed. Yes, it, it has grow. to grow. Yeah. Oh, by law, yeah. it has to grow. So no matter what the uh, you know prices are or how horrible it is for the consumers, what they do, whatever they have to do to um, you know keep making incrementally higher profits every year. That's their. That's literally its purpose as a corporation. Mm -hmm. It's a monster oh. that um, we've created that uh, needs to be slain. Mm. A what? Well, hey, wait, 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 back wait, off wait, your wait, socialist wait, wait, agenda wait, wait, here, wait you libtard. You left, leftist thug. <laughs> Corporations are gods. We got to tear it down. Yeah. If, they, if we tear it down, yeah. we don't have a television show, bud. Guys, we have it under control. We have, we, we're, we're like, I don't, we, we, don't want to have a television show. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, um, you're looking great today, I mm -hmm. have to say. Yeah, the, why the sunnies? Why the duster? Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, in one of those moods where you just want to wrap yourself in a warm duster mm -hmm. and uh, and throw on some sunglasses because mm -hmm. you're just not fully awake and you just got to, you know, hide from the world a little bit, but mm -hmm. while also looking awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to say, point out to fans uh, that this is the actual duster that was actually on the show. I got oh. it from Sabrina Rosen, who's our uh, head of costumes, head of wardrobe. And yeah. uh, she she pulled it out of storage for us. So that's the one. Mm -hmm. Charlie, I did also ask if we could get your oil man costume from this episode. Oh, um, that would be but good. They, they couldn't pull it in time for me. But oh, well, God, this, so know, this the episode bolo is a, tie there are the... so many memes from this episode. Absolutely. Both outside in, in, in the world, in the com comedy community and just the general public and also within us and our little inside joke uh, meme yes. system that we have. Did you notice a few of those, Glenn, Charlie? No. No. What are you talking about? What's an inside joke meme? What is thing? a... But, but things means. we say amongst ourselves, like in the office or whatever. Like, yes. So like, what was one of them? Uh, one of them would be, uh, uh, that is what happened. That is oh, that what is happened. happened. That is what happened. No. Oh. Charlie oh, said, yes, you guys yeah, were saying yeah, something yeah, about yeah. how my bossiness yeah. was confused for uh, braininess. That is what happened. And Charlie yeah, goes, yeah, that yeah. is what yeah. happened. And we've said that. <laughs> we've said that yeah, amongst each yeah. other as an inside joke for... 20 years there's a lot yeah. of good things about this episode i mean actual car crashes yeah 
Uh, Zack Knight? <laughs> Zack Explosions? <laughs> yep. The, the slow and eventual total and complete destruction of his, uh, you know, Honda Accord or yeah. whatever the hell car that was yes. is, is uh, so funny. Yeah. Yeah. So the, guy that plays, oh, the, man. the guy that plays Random Guy is one of our closest friends, Zack Knighton, um, mm. who is currently on Magnum P.I. and mm. moves to Hawaii. Oh, and we never see, that's we'll why we'll never yeah, see him too. again because I don't know that he's ever coming back. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. He's so he's so, such a Hawaii guy. I mean, what, what could there have been a better gig for Zach Knighton mm. <laughs> than a gig that takes place in Hawaii? I don't think so. Right, yeah. So right. we, so the random guy. Have you know? Did you notice how how poor the visual effects were in this episode? No. Oh. They're terrible. You mean, the, you mean the fireballs? The fireballs? I thought the, no, the fireballs, fireballs look great. The fireballs are fantastic. The fireballs look the great. The fireballs are fantastic. The green, okay, I'm talking you... about the green screen. Oh, uh, some of the key uh, ends in the van. You mean like the jump, me jumping out of the back of the van? Oh, the, just the, awful. The street just, or whatever. Just awful. Oh, and nobody's looking at the background when that happens. Yeah, Everybody's baby. just staring at your face saying, yeah. wild card bitches. <laughs> yeah, but then you yeah. jump out. You, you're, your eyes, <laughs> yeah. my eyes drawn to it. And then, I don't know what you're talking I jumped out of a moving van, man. I don't know, I know. what you're I talking about. You're spoiling this for me now. I yeah. really thought you guys did a stunt there. I think that's there. fair. Maybe my memory is, yeah, my yeah. memory is just. Yeah. No, he jumped out of a moving van. He went full Tom Cruise. He yeah. Mm -hmm. broke his ankle and mm -hmm. kept going have any of you ever jumped out of a moving car no no um no i mean you know uh I, i've jumped out of the car as it's coming to a stop <laughs> but that's not what you're asking mm. uh, i've jumped off of a moving train but it was moving so slowly <laughs> oh really oh, yes yeah. oh, like i don't even know that though. i rolled i think we just hopped, just hopped out. i've jumped out of a cab and booked it before yeah yeah like uh Oh, sort of like a mean? like a dash situation. Yeah. Sort of? oh. oh, yeah. To, to, uh, so as to not pay for such. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Oh. Uh, oh, man. I can tell you the time it happened. It wasn't a common practice, but uh, I was at uh, our notable composer Cormac Bluestone's mm. apartment in New York, and I'd taken the subway back to mine. It was about four a.m. You know, and uh, I got to my apartment and realized I'd left my keys at Cormac's, and you know the trains run so slow at that time. And I, I probably was inebriated. Uh, I said, all right, I'm going to hop a cab back. But I knew I didn't have any money. So I hopped the cab back up towards Cormac na Cormac's neighborhood, just being like, all right, when is the moment where I go firing out of this cab and just book it? And then I waited for like a one-way road that I knew the cabbie couldn't go up. And then I took off. And the guy didn't even fucking... <laughs> he didn't yeah. even bat an eye where he was like, yeah, I fucking knew it probably, yeah. you know, like, this little, oh, this little no. scumbag. But now I don't do that. Now I don't have to do that. No, you, you can afford to pay the cab. I can pay the cab. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I know, but it's that's still good. fun to steal food from the mouths of, uh, you know, <laughs> it, is. Yeah. it is. It is. Sure. You know what I mean? It's it just yeah, that's coming yeah. out of his box. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, now I oh, I'm absolutely. an over tipper, you know, always yeah. making up for that. Um, <laughs> Did you guys notice that the woman uh, who doesn't say anything, um, mm. but she's actually quite funny. Who you are? Who you are playing? You are you are as the oil as the oil man. Did, uh -huh. did you recognize that actor? Oh, she is on a very now. I didn't look this up, so I'm just guessing. Okay. But let's see if I, let's see if I'm right. Um, she's on a very big television show right now, and she's she's great in the show, and she stands out in the show. Hmm. Um, hmm. I, I don't know. I didn't notice. If, if I'm wrong about this, we'll cut that. Cut that, or Meg will keep it in. Mm. But I, I'm silly. almost sure she has a very specific look. She had a familiar looking face for sure. Let's pop it up on the screen oh, for them. But creeps. why didn't yeah. she have any lines? Guess. Was she an extra? Did we cut her lines? Don't know. She may have been background because we couldn't afford to. We were, we were terrible about that back in the day. We were like, oh, we could probably get away with doing this without um, the actor actually saying words because <sighs> the second they, it. they say the, it. The, the second they say one line, yeah, it, it you becomes have to pay uh, them more, um, way more. Significantly more. Melora Hart. Okay. Now, and it looks like she's been in a bunch of anime uh -huh. as a voice. Okay. And that's the actress. I don't know, Rob. Is she on the show Succession? Oh. Oh, you think that one? No, that's not the same woman. Even if I'm wrong, which I could absolutely be. You are. Can we you do are. a side? Yeah, can we are. do a side by side? Phones. I know the woman I mean, you're thinking. You know of. the woman I'm talking about, and you know the woman in the. Yeah, there's a there's a Who's similarity the to their looks. They don't they don't look alike, man. They look exactly the same. It's the same person. She changed her name. They they don't even look even a little bit alike <laughs> to me. <laughs> hold on, hold no, on. I I know I see what you see, Rob, for sure. There's oh my is. God, get the fuck out of here! You guys are nuts. Look at this woman's face. 
<laughs> okay, now go back to the other one. Now, this is 10 years ago. Oh my God, it's the same person. <laughs> no, it's you guys no, are crazy. No, similar. Okay, yeah, all right, I see, I see. Uh, similar, they I look see, similar. I see, a, I see a similarity. Same, um, not the same. Same, well, as, yeah, not the same, but I do see but some similar. similarity there. Similar. Creeps, creeps, creeps. I'm gonna need right. you. Well, we'll put them side similar. by they side. Look, they look very similar, but not not the same, you know? Like, no, like no, was, uh, well, she changed her name. It is the same person. I, this is okay. a fun little diversion. <laughs> <laughs> but what are the odds that Melora so-and-so just disappeared? Mm -hmm. and, and then on the scene comes this woman, Jeannie uh, Berlin. Uh, are you confessing to a crime? <laughs> <laughs> so, by the way, a shout out to uh, Sonny Lee and Pat Walsh, who uh, are are credited on, on this episode uh, for some writing and uh, very, very funny guys. Yeah. Definitely a, uh, an episode you hear that gets memed quite a bit because there are people who try to do this all the time in real yeah. life. Yeah. Resell gas. In real life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They get busted reselling the gas. I like when there's just enough logic to the plot. You know, where we're like, okay, it's stupid, but I could see why they're mm -hmm. thinking about doing it. That is what the industry does. The industry, the industry. The gasoline industry? Sure, creates the, the gasoline, has a supply, waits for the demand to go up, and then adjusts the prices accordingly. Yeah, and then. So it's it not, it's funny not, it's not how, a crazy how they, idea. How they determine those things, you know, so that there's like, literally a guy who's like, all right, it's going to be 0.3 cents uh, higher today. So, you know, and then mm. the guy's got to get up there and he's got to change the sign. Mm. You know, he's got to, he's got his little, he's got his ladder and he's like, and he doesn't get, you know, he's like, what is this? I, why, really? 0.3 cents, you know, or whatever. <laughs> it's, it's bizarre. Rob, you worked at a gas station. Did you ever have to change the sign? I did. No, we never did. And this, th this was a time that there was, it was not digital signs. In fact, I, I don't still, even 2023, don't see a lot, or 2022, I don't see a lot of digital signs. Yeah. I think it's a lot of going out there with the big stick. I never had to do that. But I do remember it never being more than 99 cents. Now, this was 1994. But it was never more than 99 cents. And I remember everybody in Philadelphia saying, if this thing goes to a dollar, yeah. we're fucked. Mine was two dollars. If it Ooh. goes past two dollars, by the time I was driving, that's mm. what mm -hmm. it could never go past. Well, $2. here we are. It's uh, seven dollars a gallon now. None of us would know because because mm -hmm. we're off the grid. We're off the grid. We're we're socially responsible. What's wrong with you, creeps? Still buying gas? Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. a lot of options. You, you don't you care about the environment? You don't have to get a Tesla. There's a lot of options. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll suck off that grid, whatever lots way we of, can. Lots of brands. Yeah, go get yourself some solar panels and a and a Tesla power wall. Ride a bike. Everyone can afford this stuff, right? Yeah, get on, yeah. uh, get on and, a bike. Yeah. Why aren't you solar bike. yet, creep? <laughs> yeah, get solar, creeps. God damn. Yeah. The solar companies yeah. are itching like a hound dog to give you something They're you itching want. Like a hound. <laughs> we don't believe in uh, the sun here. You know, <laughs> we believe in the earth and its elements. I love I love that you do that accent in the in the in the episode. Like that is an accent that I still hear actors do when they play Southern people. That it <laughs> just does not exist anymore. It is not an accent that is that actually exists in a real human being. No one talks like that. Like it's literally people watching Foghorn Leghorn. Foghorn and being Leghorn. Like, That's how people talk <laughs> in the South. Wait, but uh, no one talks like that. Are this. you saying that people don't have accents in the South? Or don't have that accent. No, no, I'm saying they don't sound like that. They, their accent doesn't sound like that. Yeah, that's a cartoon character yeah, that's version. A, that's a cartoon. Exaggeration that's a cartoon. Of it. Well, it's not even. Yeah, it's an exaggeration. It's also just. It's just. Not, it's just not an accent that people have anymore. I do think that, like, you know, it's just kind of like it, it's kind of like that thing that Kevin Spacey was doing on on House of Cards. What was the name of that show? House of Cards. Mm -hmm. uh, House of Cards. Like that is also an accent that a lot of actors do. They play that sort of genteel Southern gentleman who oh, talks yeah, like this. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, dude, there hasn't been a, a a a gentleman in the South who talks like that since the fucking nineteen twenties. Like, uh, it's just a, it's not an accent that exists anymore. I mean, you're not, you, you, there's you, some I pretty things. Mary, Mary yeah. Elizabeth's grandfather yeah. had that kind of affect. Papa Jamie yeah. pretty much talked like that. Yeah. And how old and was Papa Jamie? He was, he was old. Yeah, so it's just that that people do, did in the past possibly speak like that, but then that was spread via cartoon character. Uh -huh. And then yeah. from there, yeah. um, people who, who did not grow up in the South uh, assumed that that would, might be the accent and then just sort of. Propagate. Yeah. That's what you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm suggesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yosemite uh, Sam. 
Oh, yeah, what, a, yeah, yeah. what a good and authentic <laughs> accent. <laughs> <laughs> but you could say the same thing about Bugs Bunny, who who was doing Groucho Marx, and people did speak that like that at a time, but we don't now, now you don't have s actors playing Northerners doing a Groucho Marx impersonation. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's person by person, right? I'm sure there's somebody in Texas who talks like this, right? But they're probably older and, yeah, I don't know, like... Uh, same with the a Boston accent. You hear people like really lay on the Boston accent thick, and most people like have like a little bit of it, and they're dropping their R's a little bit, and then you run into that one guy where it's just like thick well, as can be. Mm -hmm. But just so just so we're being clear, I'm not even talking about the extremeness of the accent. There are people in the South that have very strong, strong accents. They just don't sound like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they they just sound different from that uh but you know it's the kind of thing that you like you know i grew up in the south so i i i maybe have a, a more of a refined ear for it yeah. you know just like you would it's a little bit more nuanced mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. you're just yeah, going out accent. of your way to say my bad accent was bad is this, that's what i'm picking up on like <laughs> no, i, I feel like you're not. i feel like you're jumping through hoops <laughs> to, to come down on you to come down on the accent and like listen no, man, I, I know I, I, it was a cartoon accent no, I know you do. I know. I know. That's why it's funny. That's I like okay. that you do that. And and but that's why also, you know, I threw in the uh I see that. I see your gestures. <laughs> I mean, your you sunglasses you. and your duster and your judgments on accents. <laughs> I say I say I, I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing these days, money-wise? I'm good. Are you asking us for money, Rob? Well, recently I thought, I don't know how long this bear market's going to go on for, so I should start a little side hustle to stay afloat. Mm, that s and is hitting you hard, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I turned to our friends at Shopify, and I got to say, I've never known success like this. Your Wikipedia uh, does describe you as a businessman in the opening line, so I... I thought that you would know. Okay. Well, they probably got wind of my Shopify, and that's why they that's why they wrote that in there. Now, you doing crazy business on there, Rob? Crazy profit margins? What are we talking about? All green candles, buddy, to the moon. That sounds like true unbridled success to me. You know, you have won at capitalism. I log on, and I immediately hear the succession theme song in my head. Can't say I doubt it. See, Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big businesses. So anyone can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales and effortlessly stay informed. I mean, come on. And I love that Shopify helps me reach customers across the world and social media, whether on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, or more. Go to shopify.com slash sunny. That's all lowercase, shopify.com slash sunny for free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash sunny right now. Shopify.com slash sunny. Oh my God, the bank scene. Yeah. Mm. Which, oh, is, which is so clearly Guginos. Yeah, yeah, so that's like, Guginos, yeah. How many scenes have we shot in Guginos at that point? Two, three? Uh, yeah, I Maybe think a couple, a couple at least. Um, enough. That's so one that, right. of the best scenes from top to bottom. I think that's in the this show. This is a strange bank. <laughs> this, is, this, this is a strange. Is a strange bank. Bank. Your boss is a woman. Your now this is a strange is a bank. <laughs> yeah, it's the idea that we went in there knowing it was going to be a man. We knew well, that's why we. Well, yeah, we but then, okay, fine. Right, it's a new world. We're progressive. We get it. But your boss, we need to talk to him. Um, yeah, I talked to that guy. The, one of my favorite <laughs> things we better. ever did was like the better. three of us sitting across, or four or five of us sitting across from a desk from someone yeah. who is a sane person who is mm -hmm. dealing with basically insane people. And this is a particularly good version of it. Yeah, uh, and that actor is so wonderful because whenever we find, when we find that straight it. person, sometimes they're not funny and she was really funny. She so her funny. reactions yeah. were, were great. It, lots of things came out of this. Um, it's a mm. little tiny thing, but um, I think he'll understand more better. Yeah. Um, is that the first time you said mm -hmm. it? I, yeah, think I think that's, so. yeah, that's I think so right. funny. He's going to understand. Yeah, wait, do you her intelligence what? while speaking yeah. <laughs> with poor <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right, uh, right. But we got it under control. Uh, we got it all under control. Yeah. No, it's just, you know, our way of continuing to signal to the audience that uh, these are not good people. These are not educated people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and yet they act superior. 
Uh, I, I, that the the more better thing though has become one of my favorite runners of of your characters on the show. Mm-hmm. I d- did want to talk uh, about one thing, you guys, which is this. Just the concept of three guys popping their shirts off in a bank mm. to try to, yeah, uh, get a loan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's um, a really good idea. The such a funny build in this scene of you because you set up the whole thing about the wild card, and now you're getting on each other's case about like stepping on each other's toes while you're at the bank, and then it culminating it with which one of us do you want to take you in the back and bang you with yeah. your shirts off like this. <laughs> out of the three of us. Out, out of the, of the three, three of us. us. Mm-hmm. Who's, who's it going to be? And then you guys yeah. flexing for her. So I wanted to talk about this mm. because this mm. is how many years ago now? So this episode would have come out in what? 2008. Eight. Eight. Yep. Yeah. How do you feel about this being out there in the world? Would you take these bodies back? Is this, uh, have you improved upon since then? Um, I would like to go ahead and point out that if we were doing this to you, it would be wildly unacceptable. <laughs> so let me just go ahead and, and point out the hypocrisy. That being said. You um, did this. I didn't ask you to do this. <laughs> no, but I mean, if we pulled up a picture of you from 15 years ago and we said, hey, how are you feeling about this yeah. body here? You know, like, uh, you know, this would be frowned upon. But um, I'd love it. I feel great. I would, I would, I kill, I, I would kill for that physique. <laughs> uh, I do like your. I, I, your I'm, actually, I wouldn't kill for it. I wouldn't even. I would barely even go to the gym for it. <laughs> <laughs> barely adjust your diet one bit. Yeah, I gotta live my life, man. This was, I do remember this being the the sort of year that I started noticing myself. You know, gaining a little weight around the middle, which is something that I just genetically hadn't been able to do prior to this season. And all of a sudden, I was like, Oh no, my body's changing. <laughs> You guys look great. I think I lo- I think I think I am in better shape now than I was then, but it 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 differs from month to month. However, I think I'm I'm healthier than I was then cuz that was still an era of coffee and cigarettes all mm. day long. Uh, however, uh, the my skin is what 12 years uh, 13 years old. What is yeah. it? For, oh, mm-hmm. Christ, 14 years older. And skin, yeah. there's just nothing you can do about it. The sun, fuck, we've established we Glenn, you hate the sun, right? I did you hate the sun, off, yeah. the sun pisses you off. It mm-hmm. destroys your skin. Mm-hmm. I'll say, your skin now looks, it actually looks pretty good. It's a little, yeah. it's a little you've, you've had enough work done to where mm-hmm. I'm looking at that spring. rubbery glow. Yeah. Uh, Lasers. Oh, so one thing I'm doing at the end of this scene is moving your pecs around. Is, <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying to move my, which I but think I can still, yeah, I can still do that. Yeah, uh, but I, I give her a look. Now, earlier in the in the episode, there's a really funny scene that was making me laugh of that's so simple and stupid of Charlie just giving looks, just giving oh, yeah, expressions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to find what the wild Trying card face is. Trying to find what the wild card face is. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was just really funny. And on the day, it was just Charlie just making faces. Mm-hmm. And so at the end of this scene, I try to make a, my sexiest face to her, right? About here. <laughs> <laughs> Now, <laughs> yeah, that's good, bud. Just trying to, just I'm trying like, to also like. Glenn's out, doing this. <laughs> and Charlie's laughing. <laughs> Charlie's, look, if you pause it right at this time code, Charlie is laughing. Am I laughing? Yeah, Charlie's laughing. But look, the body looks great. But you're laughing. <laughs> Am I laughing? I yeah, don't think go I'm to, laughing if you go to there. one frame right before. Oh, right before you we cut are out, most I probably. Definitely laughing. <laughs> <laughs> right there, you see it. Yeah, you, see transition. Transition. you see him transition. You see him transition. You guys are enjoying it's it. It's funny. It's funny. The uh, the I, I like the uh, that sort of in insecure, slightly insecure flexing. Yeah, yes. that we're all doing. Is this cool? Everyone's trying cool? to do yeah. the posture that they think makes their body look best. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, oh, to get strange. a loan to get gasoline. Wait, do you guys remember this conversation? There was so- somebody put body makeup on. I can't remember who it was. Was it me or Glenn? It was who, definitely going to be you. one of you guys. It was you. Tan. Yeah, it was you. It was you, Rob. I mean, I always I, I have my always farmer's tan. Yeah. So Glenn's got his farmer's tan, And too. so does Charlie. Did I have like... <laughs> yeah. You put on, yeah. you put on body yeah, makeup. Yeah, you t- I think I did. You t- I, and I remember talking about it there and saying, wait, I thought because... It was one of those situations where the makeup department was like, oh, I think Glenn wears body makeup when he takes his shirt off from time to time. and I which never is not, Which is not weird. You never had? Not not up to that point. Uh, I will. I will. I do now. Uh, but back yeah, it, then, that, no. that's actually a common practice and not that weird. And it's mostly to no. match your skin tone of your face because when totally. you wear makeup, 
you wear makeup and so then when you take your shirt off you put you so then i remember going oh i guess we're wearing body makeup okay so then they paint you up with this like whatever that makeup is and it's not that it's dramatic tan, right? it's just a it's kind of like a spray tan it just looks different than now glenn looks very farmer tan and i remember standing there and i remember one of you guys being like what the fuck man i'm like what i don't know i thought we were wearing body makeup i guess yeah. it doesn't look that doesn't look that different. no no you can't tell no. no thank you for letting me objectify you guys oh, yeah right. yeah I'm down. I'm down. I, I just had to call it out well, um it's a little leveling different. things out yeah it's a little different, a little different. um <laughs> power dynamics there i mean meg is in meg is in power in here, charge, and i think that and that's I, what you're suggesting i feel objectified yes because um, meg is in a position of power over us mm -hmm. uh -huh. she's the producer mm -hmm. okay now we have a suit yeah now we have a suit <laughs> But unfortunately, or, she has no money, so we have to sell have more ads. ads. No, what we have so is that we about can, that sell ads so that we can sue her back. and get the money back. That's, from her. that's good. No, that's it's good. not about that. It's about having that in your back pocket in case something else goes down. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's leverage. Oh, it's yeah, when yeah, Meg yeah, comes yeah, at yeah, us yeah, with yeah, a suit yeah. and we say, exactly. actually, he, we have a counter suit. Exactly. Yeah. Unless I cut that out of this episode and then you guys don't have any proof. Uh, outsmart it again. Outsmart it again. Speaking of being the brains and having good ideas like that, the brains, the looks, the wild card, the muscle, and the useless chick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such a great structure for this episode. Mm -hmm. And you switching roles and like trying to, how did you guys, do you remember how you came up with that? Yeah, that was just us being in the room and talking about those. I think it started with the A-team where we looked yeah. at the A-team and that right. was like such a perfect show where they decided, right, we just need a... a, a, a a stereotype, not a stereotype. What's the word I'm looking for? Archetype. Um, archetype. Ar so, yes, an archetype for each individual character so that everybody's distinct and different, but they all fulfill a role. And so when it just laid itself out really beautifully for us, but then you you realize it extends into so many different stories. Mm -hmm. Ghost, Ghostbusters, for mm -hmm. example. <laughs> Speaking of which, this is the episode where we spent yes. the most amount of money ever. That's right, to get the Ghostbusters song. song. Mm -hmm. wow. As I recall, we spent so, and we were we were so blown away. We were like, "Oh, let's we'll, we'll put in the Ghostbusters theme song," and they came back with a price, and I remember what it was. Mm -hmm. And we were like, "We have never even paid anything close to this amount of money can, to just put." Can like, I guess what what it was? Please. Was it two hundred thousand dollars to play it? No, no, no. It wasn't that much. It no. wasn't that but much. It, Rob, it, do you remember? It, how it, much? it was by far the most amount of money we've ever was paid. Was it eighty? I think it was seventy yes. thousand. Seventy thousand. Okay. No, it was eighty. Okay. It was eight. 80. Well, I remember eighty. It might have been seventy. Either way, I, it's I it's in that 80. zone, and uh, we would never. Yeah. We hadn't paid more than twenty thousand dollars for a song, including like right. Michael Jackson songs and ep oh, yeah, yeah. oh, and the da and the gang dances their ass off. I mean, yeah, we the had doors. Yeah, we, had, we, had we got the doors. The doors didn't even cost. And them. the reason was that they were considering making another Ghostbusters at the time, and they were mm. trying to protect mm -hmm. for the possibility, mm -hmm. which they didn't, and. Glenn was vehemently opposed to paying this. And Charlie and I, I were was. not. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I think I was because I, I was like, it doesn't, I never, I, I didn't feel like it added that much. Like, I, I, I like it. I like it. I like what it added. And, um, you know, looking back now, I'm certainly glad we did it because like, you know, what is it, what yeah, difference does it no. make? Amortized over 15 seasons. But like mm -hmm. at the time, yeah, I think it was, I just was like, yeah, it's funny, but it's not eighty thousand dollars funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always weighing it against uh, some of the other choices you made. I will say right. that I was watching this episode with Caitlin last night, and the kids are in other rooms because they could give two flying fucks about our television show. And <laughs> mm -hmm. then that song came up, and I heard Leo from the other room go, "Who are you gonna call, Ghostbusters?" And then he comes running into the room because he wanted to hear the song and he mm -hmm. wanted to see what we were doing with the song. So. It turns out it's transcended generations because of that choice. It's a mm. hell of a song. Yeah, well, it's that, a that hell, hell of a song. Hell of a song. Is it, does he know it because of Ghostbusters Afterlife? No, we watched the original Ghostbusters, but I think it's oh, also, again, it. just one of those memeable, it's just, it's all over the internet. It is. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it is worth it for the fact that you start out the episode talking about um, how to run the bar more efficiently and you end up with an explosion in the Ghostbusters theme, which just is such a journey for the episode to take. Yeah. Like, mm. it, it's just really enjoyable. Do you remember we took this episode and we screened it at Walter Reed uh, Medical Hospital yeah. in Washington, D.C.? Really? Uh, yeah, for our men and women that's where, there. Mm -hmm. That's where Danny played that great prank on us. And yes. What, yep. would you, have we talked about this on the podcast? No. What prank so we remember. get to the hotel. I think FX, you know, pays for the flight in the hotel. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, uh, we get to the hotel and they say, "Oh, we're so sorry." They said, "They said, can we bring you? We're going to bring you guys up to your room." 
And we were like, what do you mean room? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. They're, they're saying, yeah, oh, I'm so sorry. We were under the impression that your FX is only paying for one room. Mm -hmm. And it didn't surprise us, right? Because it was so early in the show and we were such a low budget thing. And we're like, oh man, they're sticking us all in one room together. <laughs> well, not only that, but they, they, the, the guy actually said that there weren't, we were like, we were like, well, that's just not going to happen. Um, and he was like, well, ah, we don't have any, like, this is the only room we have left. And, and he was like, let's go. Can I just give you guys a tour of it? Yeah. He's like, can, let me just and show it can... to you and maybe you'll find it acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I remember you, you, you were very unhappy. I do not handle those situations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really? No. Uh, I said we we just got off a flight. Yeah, across we the were country. grumpy. Being um, disrespected. Uh, <laughs> yeah, being told no, this is what you're going to do. You're all going to sleep in this room. And now. I remember we were thinking like, oh, screw, it. we'll go find some other hotel yeah. or something. So we go up to the room, and it's you know a single room. And then out of the closet comes Danny. Well, he, he, well, first, first of all, he shows us the he shows us the suite, and it, it is pretty nice for one person uh, or two people, you know, a couple or something. But and and but he's like, but uh, you know, of course, this this we we have a cot set up in the corner. They had a cot there, so one of us was meant to sleep in a cot. <laughs> so he basically was trying to sell us on this this whole thing. And then uh, yeah, and then out of the closet, Danny pops out with. Uh, I think he had a bottle of booze or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this poor hotel staff is like, we don't want to be a part of this. We don't know. But they nailed right. it. This guy the, I really know, sold I know. it. He's, yeah, he did. I think for me, it, it was it was at that time, because now we're four seasons in, mm -hmm. and it still felt that everywhere we went, nobody knew the show. Nobody give, gave a shit about the show. And we were just kind of... I don't know. We would go on these promotional tours and we were just treated as like Danny's like staff and bodyguard or whatever it would be. <laughs> and the suggestion that all four of us would stay in the same room was not that crazy. If, if we were to go to a hotel now, you would know it was a goof in the very beginning. But at this time, it was not yeah. that unfounded. We, yeah. we were still sharing a trailer in season two. We had yeah, a, yeah, we shared a, yeah, a yeah. honey wagon. So the thought that FX would put us up or the hotel staff would just say, yeah, sure, these these animals are just sleep in one bed was not that crazy. So I don't, I don't think I handled it well. It was a level of disrespect that we had become accustomed to. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So for, if anybody's doing the uh, rewatch with us and they watch the waterboarding scene with Caitlin, mm -hmm. just know that she was being waterboarded. I'm yeah, sure. I was looking at that. I'm like, she's being waterboarded she's, right and now. She, what the hell? And she's watching it and saying, no, no, I, that was actually hell. I was being tortured. And you see when, when he when he flushes the urinal, it's just hitting the top of her head. But when he's pouring it yeah. on her. That's with right. The, now, with the fabric over it. With the fabric over it. Now, why not just say, get a fabric that mm -hmm. isn't porous. Yeah. That has right. maybe a towel look on one you side. We spent all then the money on the Ghostbusters. We spent all the money on the Ghostbusters. <laughs> Wait, song. because when the wet towel is over <laughs> your mouth, that even isn't waterboarding. It's like suffocating. That is that how is they waterboard. Well, they it's put water the going up her nose and in her mouth while she's trying to breathe. Yes. It gives you the sensation of drowning, basically, uh, but you actually you aren't actually drowning because there's enough air getting in. Yes. But you're but you know, you're you're breathing in. The wet water. towel. Yes, you're breathing that's in right. the wet and towel, the, and, and the water it's... as it comes in. But the towel is the towel is is creating enough. It, it's to, it's true, to, truly torture. You're not drowning somebody. You're torturing them. Well, and the wet towel suctions to your suctions yes. to your face, right? So you so it, it, you, there's you're not getting any air that's not coming through that sopping wet towel. Yes, and it's... she reminded me that her hands are behind her back, which was part of being bound, but also supporting her back, which at this point was broken. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh Jesus. At this so point painful. in shooting, oh, her back was broken oh, and God. she was healing, but she healed very mm -hmm. quickly because it was broken over the 4th of July weekend. Um, and um, and we shut down production for, I don't know, a few weeks and then came right back and there she was getting waterboarded. It's, um, yeah, it's torture, but it's not torture on the level of say, being asked to all sleep in the same hotel room, mm. which is just insufferable. Right. And, and yeah, I don't know which is worse. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think this is one of the first episodes Tim Roach got because um, he's doing the voice of the of the golf. Uh, oh right, oh, I was ask you guys yeah, yeah, that was Roach. Unless yeah, that was Roach. Josh cut it and uh, and Tim just did no that. Roach no. cut that. I, I, he did, I, right? I, I do remember yeah. that. Yeah, Roach cut that episode for sure, and it was it was it may have actually been the first episode that he that he um, 
edited for us, but uh, that was definitely him. Says yeah. his first episode. Yep, the gang solves the gra- gas crisis. Off to a good start. Uh, yeah, that. I, I, but I was watching that scene, Rob, and I was looking at it, and I'm like, I don't. I mean, this is indistinguishable from actual waterboarding. She's being waterboarded right now, but I don't mm. remember. I remember her uh, being upset about it, being like, "This is, y- yeah, this is not fun." Beyond. <laughs> we also created apparently a a a uh, a tremendous amount of controversy a few years later, but it never got to us. And then hmm. um, I heard a few years after that that it was a fire that was put out at the at the highest of levels at the news. Corp organization. What is that? Apparently, when we use that photograph of Bruce Mathis accepting an award mm-hmm. in the, in the newspaper, uh, he's accepting some humanitarian award, and then Frank says he's get he's he's in cahoots with terrorists. Uh, yes. Apparently, the man that is in that newspaper is a revered public figure in the Middle East, and I think we I should look say- up who he is. He is not a terrorist. Uh, and I think there was. But some what does that have to do with anything? Hullabaloo. That's just frank stereotyping. I mean, no, that's, but it's that's like literally. Yes, it's, it's what the, the, that's literally the joke. A, 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 of course, but right, I don't right, know right, that right, the people right, of Saudi Arabia, and the Middle East, are necessarily in, are are in on the joke. And it didn't. It didn't happen in real time. It wasn't they're when known it for. I mean, they're pretty well known for uh, having good sense of humor over there. They love political satire. I sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, sure. They really do. Yeah. Hello, listeners and creeps. This is Mag jumping in with a little follow-up. So I did a little digging and found out that the newspaper photo used in this scene was digitally altered after the episode aired. Apparently, the man in the original photo was a friend of Rupert Murdoch's, so word came down from the top that it had to be scrubbed from the episode. That is what happened. Now, back to the show. I want to talk about... Another thing that came out of this episode that I hear repeated a lot, which is, uh, I know how to count, dude, that line oh, when you're counting, talking about counting, counting, counting the, liquid. the gasoline. Yeah, yeah, counting the liquid. Yeah. How are you going to count a liquid? Uh, I know how to count, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you, do you do it. You do it. You do it. You do it. You do it because I can't. You do it. I can't because I can't. Oh, right. Because I can't. I can't. I can't. Right, right. Uh, I love the scenes that with the gas station guy. Oh, yeah. he's yeah. great. Um, he's We're going to hit you where it hurts. You are dick. You're dick. No, not his dick. Not his dick, man. What? His wallet. Why are yeah. you getting this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you flipping up with that lighter, like at a moment's yeah, notice. Yeah. Like that's always the way the wild card goes. Oh. That's kind of a dynamic we haven't done. And it could have been really funny, like the three of us trying to poorly threaten someone. I feel like we haven't done a lot of threatening. Mm-hmm. But threatening could be very funny. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not a when, while. It, when it's done wrong. I, but do you remember, uh, do you guys remember uh, we, and I can't remember why, uh, maybe it was, I think it was maybe because we were at an actual gas station. We could not actually light that Zippo lighter. That's right. So we had to do uh, what was at the time for us a very intensive special effect, which was just to put a flame coming out of that Zippo. Mm -hmm. Now, Rob, I'm Mm -hmm. sure you remember this because I remember you and I just absolutely losing our minds Mm -hmm. at how inept it seemed that they were. We would come in there and look at what they comped in and there'd be like this giant flame coming out of it. And we're like, well, no, we're like, can you make it look like a, uh, oh, I don't know, a Zippo lighter? Because that's what it is. Can we, you know, you don't want to be a dick, but but I just remember thinking like, yeah, that's cool. Now, uh, can we do one where it looks like the actual thing that we're holding? <laughs> you fucking idiot. Like, why do you not know what that looks like? You're, this is what you do. It was the flame guy that worked at the special effects place. Like, his whole specialty was fire. Fire stuff, and he it, doesn't know what his a job is called. Like. Flame. He was he was the flame yes. guy. Yeah, right. Well, well they yeah, did yeah, a great yeah. job on the fireball. That's for fuck. They sure. did. Yeah. Well, they did. But, but, I'm but the that flame was guy. You want a flame? <laughs> I'm going to give you a good flame. You know, well, yeah, that, like, that, yeah, that was I, fascinating I, to do such a great job on the fireball, but then we just couldn't get him to do the light. That was he, that he was, was an actual excited, fireball. Right? Too, too no, that was an actual. That oh, was an actual was fireball. Was an actual fireball. Yes, it was. Yes. That so was we had a guy. Yep. Yes. we had a guy standing in front of a green screen. Yes. who blew an actual fireball. So we had the and, element. Mm-hmm. That's right. We had the element. So why didn't we do that um, with a lighter? Why didn't we shoot a little flame coming off I the think, lighter and then? I, I think we did. Um, I don't know. I don't Glenn know. laid into this guy like he was the hotel manager who wasn't. No, I did not. <laughs> I did not. I did not. I was. I was. Uh, Ew, but I, I wanted to. Yeah. I wanted to. <laughs> yeah. You call yourself uh, a flame guy. You're no flame guy. <laughs> That's not what a lighter does. 
what was that in the barrel? Do you guys remember what you were drinking? Because you slurp it up, but yeah, then the more memorable one is Charlie siphoning it out of his. Well, out let me of tell you something. Tank. When you siphon out of a car, whether you've put something in there or not, there's been yeah. gas in that car. So you do get, I remember getting like a mouthful of fumey, oh. whatever we put in there. I can't remember what we put in there, but. What did it taste like? I mean, I, I don't know. I've never had gasoline I can't remember, probably because I drank gasoline. You know what I mean? Like, this is... This I is like that you point out that it's such a waste of time because we're we're yeah. we're, we're, we're wasting yeah, we're burning so much the gas. And then Driving also, you've just swallowed so much of it. Oh, it's just, and, that's, and you're more annoyed at... Yeah. It's a damn waste. waste. Uh, gang, we want you to know that this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. If you're not familiar with BetterHelp, it's an online therapy service that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with licensed therapists all around the world. How it works is you answer questions and BetterHelp assesses your needs and matches you with the right person to talk to in less than two days. It's not just about who's around you or who's available. It's about who's best for you. Yeah, I've actually used BetterHelp before because I had a a sort of temporary problem that I wanted to see a therapist um, quickly about. And it was really, really easy to use. I signed up and they matched me with someone really quickly. Well, that's about, yeah, I mean, that's the best part of it, right? You get matched to the the person that's the most right for you. You're not like tethered to, you know, whoever's in your area, whoever's available, whoever you can get an appointment with, you can get uh, matched with the right person from all over the world. And you don't have to sit in traffic and go to the person's office. You get to just do it right from your laptop computer. That's right. Always Sunny podcast listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash sunny. Creeps, you are already reading this with your eyeballs, but listeners, that's H-E-L-P, not Better health. Go to betterhelp.com slash sunny for 10% off your first month of therapy. <laughs> I, I do feel like this episode and this season is where we really found the show. You know, where it, it, the first season we were discovering what it is, and the second, we're refining it and Danny's coming in. So that's a new element. And the third, we're trying some big swings and maybe some things are a little more cartoony than where we want to go. And this season, we're really kind of settling into it. And the character dynamics and how we relate to each other are really tight in this episode. So I think this you is can, where it really works. You can feel it in that scene after the bank. I love that you guys are trying to move on to the next step in the plan. And then Dennis is just hung up on, I can't believe you guys. We very rarely, we very rarely do that. And it stood out to me and I really liked it. I that, loved it. That Dennis wants mm-hmm. to, can we just have a heart to heart for a second? Yeah. Kind of, can I get this I off just, my chest? Yeah, he's uncomfortable about something. I don't want to carry, this around. I don't, I don't carry yeah, this around. That, yeah. that, that didn't sit That well was my me. thing and yeah. you guys took it. Yeah. And it hurt. And it yeah. hurt. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually a very, very kind of mature way of approaching the situation. You know what I mean? Like uh, far more mature than than how these characters normally act. To, to, to come to your friends and say, hey, listen, I got to bring something up because this really, this really bothered me when you guys did this. Like that, that's actually a healthy way to confront somebody about mm-hmm. how their behavior affected your mm-hmm. affected you. Yeah, I remember feeling that too, that it's like, oh, this is interestingly out of character, mm-hmm. right? To see yeah, him like yeah. a little broken about something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but also but also to be broken about that. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah, like the, yeah, yeah. the vanity and the ridiculousness is still there because what I'm hurt about is just <laughs> so ridiculous. And but vain. that's your thing. We've established that's, that's your thing. thing. And if you take my yeah. thing away from me, then what role do I have? Mm-hmm. And what but then I? you very quickly realize that you're not only not only did you get that back, but then you also added a thing. So you took one away from from me. Wasn't that the same scene? You yeah. then said, I'm, He's the I'm actually the brains and, the and, and the looks. And you're the muscle. Yeah. But you could be, yeah, because you confuse my bossiness for braininess, <laughs> which is definitely a real conversation at some point. Is what happened. That is what that happened. That is what happened. That is his personality. <laughs> that is who he is. Um, uh, I have a question for you guys. <laughs> have you ever sold cars. anything door to door? I have. Yeah. Did you, did we did talk you about sell this? meat no. or knives? You sold meat or knives, right? What buddy, did you sell door to door? Buddy, I, I sold. I sold meat. Yeah. It was a, uh, a not a job that I had for a long time. It was it was a c- crazy crazy job. I'd driving around in a refrigerated truck and tr- trying to sell people like large quantities of meat. You know, like meat in bulk. 
Like somebody knocks on your door and is like, I got a truck full of meat. Uh, you, you, you interested in that? You know, like, Did you ever get any it. sales? Yeah, yeah, I made a few. I made a few, but I wasn't good at it because I, I was never good at at. at uh, I was never good at just I don't know sales many stuff like bull, mm. bullshitting. It mm. felt like bullshit because it was. Well, so have we I solved had. the podcast crisis today? Uh, yeah, maybe. So. I was going to ask if you guys wanted to give us your best wild card face, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I know that Glenn's ready to give his wild card face right now. Let's do um, it. Yeah, let's yeah, do it. Right? I'll do it. But, yeah. Glenn, go. Oh, you want me to start? Yeah. 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 Why don't you start? I feel like maybe I should go last. You know what? Do you, do you want? Do you mind taking off the sunglasses? Because I feel like so much is in the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Charlie, could you? Because my arm. Yeah. yeah. Thank. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Ready? Uh, yep. Oh, that's oh, good. Yeah. That is so good. Oh, that's great. Do, do another one, Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> I can't beat that. Yeah, that's you can't do it. Yeah, no, I'm not even going to try. That's can't the, even that's, compete. That's, that's not even going to try. You guys like that? <laughs> yeah, that, that was cool, great. man. Thank uh, you. I'd also talk about lo the looks of things. I'd also like to talk about um, the sexy drawings that Dennis, mm. this is the first episode I oh. think where he makes. <laughs> no, no, this is no, Fatty Magoo. Fatty Magoo, he was the first, but here's a research. Arousing himself with his own drawings. Yes, of Dennis's version of an ideal woman who's like completely uh, disproportionate. Um, <laughs> yeah, who, yeah, who giant breasts those? and a tiny waist. Does, does Casey know? draw? Casey's uh, a great artist. No, that was actually, the, I, I think that was actually, um, it was a female props master that we had uh, that, that drew all those photos. Oh, oh great. So mm -hmm. you made a woman yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, didn't make, we don't make, we don't make <laughs> women do anything. It says in the script and- We said just draw an attractive woman. We're like, this This is what you came up with? <laughs> this is what you're doing. Right, let's uh, go with it. You know what I mean? Uh, That's funny for us. No, the, the sort of teenage- What do you want? Do you want women to have more jobs in Hollywood or <laughs> yes. do you want- Come on. It's what are more, we supposed to do? It's more better for them. It's more better for you to take a job and do what we say. You know? We've established this. We've established. It, it makes more sense to give a, a woman the opportunity to draw a woman. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. the way that a man e explains it. Yes. In the <laughs> way that we've explained to do it. <laughs> we told this her how to do it, but like. we allowed mm. her to do <laughs> yeah. the work. And if you push back, work. we'll take this shit to the Supreme Court and we will win. <laughs> well, of course we'll win. <laughs> this is a great time to be a man. Yeah, we will get our man's way. We, we had a it. rough run. We had a rough run for like three, four years, but I think we're back, right? Well, what? Men are back. Men are back. Men are back. We never left. <laughs> no, nah, we never, we left. never we left. left. We never left. We never left. We never left.